we had a number of months here and uh, the sales actual sales that had happened in that company and then we wanted to make a decision what is the best method of forecasting uh, to be used for this company and we tried two period moving average three period moving average four period moving average and then we used a measure of uh, evaluation of the goodness of forecasting which is mean squared error so this mean squared error is basically by finding the error and then squaring every error and then basically we average error squares and that of course gives us the mean squared error but this is just one method of evaluation of the goodness of um, our forecasts the other uh, method uh, is mean absolute error and mean absolute percentage of error so this is what i'm going to do now i'm going to uh, basically use the same spreadsheet and the same data but now we are going to use another measure of quality of the forecast okay so uh, we may end up we usually end up having the same kind of decision but uh, let's see what will happen if we change our measure of uh, decision making okay of course our two period moving average and errors will be the same but this column that i'm deleting is we are not going to use that and we are not going to use mean squared error to make a decision okay we want to predict what would be the sales in the 13 weeks but we are not going to use mean squared error as the uh, method of evaluation of the goodness the story is that we want to choose between different methods of um, forecasting if we use two period moving average forecasting so we will use these two past actuals at the end of the second time bucket to make the prediction for the third week so to be to be familiar with the uh, former writing is that our forecast for time bucket three happens at the end of the second month and our forecast is 194 and then when the second the third month actually happens we see that oh our forecast for the third month is wrong was wrong and actual minus forecast has an error basically we overestimated the month three and the actual month three sales was 190 instead of 194.5. And when we use mean squared error, we actually square every one of these errors, and then we use that as a measure of uh, how good, the, how much error we had here. And the reason that we do mean squared error was that we want to get rid of these positive and negative signs, because if we add these positive and negative signs, usually they cancel each other, and we don't have a good representation of the total error that we have. Now, can anybody suggest any other way that we can get rid of the sign of these errors that we have and develop a new measure of uh, how much error we had in our the two period moving average um, forecasting? The absolute value? Exactly. So. We squared this to get rid of the sign, but the other option is that we can find the absolute value to get rid of the sign, and this is what we are going to do. So, this is what we do. We go to uh, so here we will find the absolute error.
And the absolute value of error would be absolute value of this error, which is basically if it is negative 4.5, it will become positive 4.5. And if it is a positive number, it will remain the same. So these are the absolute errors and a measure of uh, total goodness of or total amount of error that we have had is called mean absolute error, MAE, which is basically the average of these numbers. So the still the same kind of forecast happened. Notice that I didn't change our forecast from the last time. The forecasts are still two period moving average forecasts are the same, errors are the same, but the way that we are analyzing our errors is different. And instead of squaring them and finding their mean, we are getting their absolute value and finding their mean. So on average, if we use two period moving average, the mean absolute error would be 33.15, we do the same thing for absolute value of error here, which is basically the apps of the amount of error. If you are doing it by hand, you have to be careful that here we had more numbers. So when you are finding the average of these, you have to count them like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So once you find the average of these, when, when you want to find the average of these numbers, you add them and you divide by ten. And when you want to find the average of these numbers, you have to divide by nine because the first forecast that we can do is at the end of uh, month three or time bucket three, four, time bucket four, okay? And now we copy this formula, which is basically apps, oh, we didn't, oh, this one. Uh, this formula, we copy that down, and that gives us the absolute value of the error, and then mean absolute error is basically the average of these numbers. We do the same thing here. We find the absolute value of error. And... Uh, Amir, I have a quick question. Um, how did you get the numbers to become uh, absolute? Like, I see I see what they are. Can I just type them in, uh, the error numbers, just without their signs, directly in the absolute uh, error column? Or did you input... No, some, no. So we type the formula. We type equals absolute value of the error. Because if the number changes, you want to be able to use the same spreadsheet. Okay, perfect. Just Thank find you. the absolute value, and then you copy that formula down. This gives you the absolute errors. Absolute error. And then, here we find the mean absolute error, which is basically the average of these absolute errors. Now here, the, if, we used, if we had used um, two period moving average, maybe I'll highlight it for you. If we had used this method in the, all of the past 12 months uh, since we are working in this company, this would be our mean absolute error. If we had used three period moving average in this company, then we would have a different mean absolute error, this one. And if we use four period moving average, our absolute error would be, uh, you know, average error would be different and would be this one. It turns out that uh, this is 33, this is 32, and this is 34. So if we had used in the past uh, the three period moving average, it would give us the best outcome. Therefore, if, our, if we are asked to report uh, what is our forecast for week 13, we will do a 
three period moving average uh, based on this new criteria, which is absolute mean absolute error. And then the way that we do it, of course, it is the average of the last three actuals. Where are the last three actuals? These are the last three actuals, 10, 11, 12, which are used to predict week 13. So this is the forecast that we are going to report. Good. Is everybody following? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. 